Hi guys, welcome back. Tank time. <laughs> New fuel tank. <laughs> so, I went to my local, local-ish laser cutters, took a CAD design that of the fuel tank that I wanted made and had them laser cut everything out of the two mil aluminium. So we've got internal baffles, some side plates, more internal baffles and then the actual uh, fuel tank itself so let's tack all this together and um, see how it fits in the car it should fit okay I cleaned my desk specifically for this take a picture it won't last <laughs> um, so yeah, I think what I'm going to do is try and get these set up as right angles so they all fit together properly, leave the top off it and um, yeah, just tack it up and offer it up into the car. This is the bottom of the top piece <laughs> and it has a baffle there and it's counterpart over here it also has something that goes in the middle and down each side as well so i think that's how i'm going to start here's a bit that goes in the middle so that goes there on the edge and then we've got these either side So now I just need to find my 85th hand to weld all these together. <laughs> so I may have accidentally turned the camera off last night, <laughs> but um, let me stand back. It was basically just me doing the jigsaw, trying to get this all into a proper shape. This is um, not done yet. Uh, but this is the shape of the fuel tank. <laughs> Let's walk outside to the car where I can show you where it fits. <laughs> now, I'm resting it there because that's where it goes. It fits in between the shape of the subframe but it will sit a little further down and a, further, a little bit further back. Okay, I've run out of uh, welding gas. <laughs> this isn't on, but I've done the majority of the stuff inside. Plenty of room. This goes on top. I've only really messed up this edge. See, it pokes out a little bit. But it's nothing I can't fill. <laughs> Uh, we need to make a little pocket for the fuel pump to sit in and then we've got the hole in the top for the 
cover so you can pull the fuel pump out if you need to and I don't know where else would you want to go on a fuel tank <laughs> it's getting there like I said some of my welding really good some of it terrible <laughs> Oh, and there's going to be an issue here as well. Look at that. <laughs> Just have to find a way to pull it in, I suppose. I wasn't happy with the last one. <laughs> Too many wavy lines and it just looked terrible. So, I've had some more laser cut. It was cheap enough, so uh, I'm not too bothered. But this time, I've had holes cut into the um, panels and tabs on the inner baffles, so it all fits together like a jigsaw now instead. None of that messing about for hours it all clicks together i can buzz up the jigsaw pieces and then go along the edge and it's all done plus i made a mistake with the old one these inner baffles that i had didn't have these top reliefs so when i would have been filling it up it would have filled up one side of it and then the air wouldn't have been able to escape so I would have never been able to get it more than half-ish full. So, mistakes were made, lessons were learned, back on CAD, take it back to the laser cutters, they've cut it out again. So this just goes together much neater now. So much neater, I'll show you in less than 10 minutes. It was that easy. So I'm going to quickly buzz these up to keep them all in place and uh, then deal with the more difficult one. There is a difficult one where I've got to weld it on and then bend it or bend it the shape and it's only got like, I don't know, a 30, 30 degree bend in it at some point. So we'll, uh, we'll do that and then weld it all together or at least tack it together so we can put it in the car and see what it looks like. Cool, 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 cool. Just need to find the middle of this now. Should be 180-ish, no, 70. 760, half 760, 
That right? Three hundred and fifty and two hundred fifty. On the market, see the knife. There's my center line on that. Next, we mark the center line here. This should be 450. No, 400. So nice, even 200 in the middle. Here's the ruler. Now I just need a line. The line's up, and that should be center. So I can tack it here, tack it here tack on the inside and then hopefully pull the baffles out so I can do this line. Then put the baffles back in, do that line and then we're good to go. Now that I know that it lines up, I can actually take this top off to get in there properly, so. I've got at least a bit of light. done I got the bend in I haven't completely gone all the way up the seams yet because I need to uh, get some sort of clamp that I can clamp it in with but that's basically the bottom of my tank and now I can just jigsaw it all back together I may run across here to make my life easier now um, so that I don't have to do it when it's inside the tank because that's the only inside tank weld. So I might do it now. effort. Hopefully it'll look nicer on the outside. <laughs> Let's build the jigsaw. I need 
other hand. happy with that. That's come out much better. Much, much, much better. I'm not going to put this side on yet because it's the one with the filler. I want to make sure the filler is in the right place. And I'm not going to put the front on yet because we need to sort out the fuel pump assembly. What I might do now is make my little uh, pump sump. <laughs> So here's the pump sump, it just needs to be bent in the right places. I'm fully expecting me to mess this up. But how bad could it be? Also, it's like 10 o'clock and I'm boiling. Don't know what you're on about. I bent it perfectly. <laughs> as long as it doesn't leak, that's all I care about. I'm gonna let it cool, and then we'll see if we can fit it to the bottom of the fuel tank, and then we can start measuring for the pump. On a brighter note, my welding's getting better. <laughs> I've got a box of fuel goodies and I'm echoing. Echo! Here's the. Oh. Here's the top plate and a gasket that goes with it. Hopefully, this all fits correctly. It looks about right. So that top plate gets bolted in there and I need to weld this aluminium piece with threaded holes in there so I can thread this plate in. But with that in there, I then have rod to get from the plate down to the little sump that I've got. On that rod, I'm going to put my fuel filter, fuel pump, it's just going to sit in there with its little sock on. So, like that. And on this plate, I'm going to put this connector. So, it's a, a low profile connector with four pins in it. So, that's four pins, two for the fuel level. And Two for the fuel level, two for the fuel pump. And then on top, I've got these other fittings that I need for whatever. The other thing that I need to do 
is the return. So the return, I think what I'm going to do is bend this pipe to come from the front, from the front in here, down in straight into the um, into the pot. Uh, and then I can weld this aluminium piece on the front. So the return just goes straight into this on the front of the tank, comes through the pipe into the little sump that I've got for the fuel pump. So I'm gonna give this 10 minutes to cool down because it's still a little bit hot. And um, yeah, we'll start measuring and cutting and making sure that this top piece is right and welding that top piece in under here. So then we've actually got a, um, that's why I've left the back off so we can measure and, and do all the bits we need. One thing I haven't got is bolts for the, um, for the top plate. So the distance should be 250 plus 25 ish. So if I go with a 200 mil rod oops, and weld it to the top plate, then that means it's close to the bottom, but it isn't on the bottom. However, Let's measure to be sure. No. If I go with a 250 rod, that's what I meant to say. Did I say 200? I meant 250. If I go with a 250 rod, that leaves me about 20 mil off the bottom. So, 250. about there. That means if I mess one side up, I can use the other side. <laughs> yeah, briefly marked on there where it needs to go. This is still hot, hot. So I think if I weld that on there, we should be good. I also didn't note which one was which one idiot. Right, I've made a, um, a sharp <laughs> cradle for the pump. So the pump will sit in there, tighten the bolt up, and then that sits on the thing. I'm not going to do it in a minute because this is so hot, but you get the idea. Then we just need a plug to the right space on here to come out and the, the feed needs to go out as well. So I might start looking at the feed next. Although I don't really want to drill holes in this until I've pressure tested the whole thing because I can seal this down as is and uh, I don't have to worry about extra holes to plug up. So I might leave that for now and test it when this cools down. There we go. So there's the pump with its sock sitting in the tray. It will actually work if I turn the pump as well, so no dramas there. It is a bit close here, but nothing a um, nothing a bit of bending on this too won't do. And the uh, top plate isn't welded in properly at the moment anyway, so it can always be sort of. Uh, jimmied around a bit and this can be moved slightly it depends if I want to cut a bit more off the bottom but either way it fits and um, 
it should always have fuel in this little sump area that I've got. Next on this bit, we need a pipe from here to the top plate somewhere, probably put it on this side, and then we need the plug. So I've got the other end of the plug somewhere. So back to my little box. Let's have a look at the box. Back to my little box. Here's the plug that goes the other side of that. So then that needs to be plugged into this, like I showed you before. And then that goes past the other hole in the top. So the pump will run on two of these plugs. While I'm here, oh, we've got We've got a bit of hose. Don't actually think it's going to be long enough. It might be. It might be. I doubt it though. I might have to get some more of this in tank hose. Either way, uh, next I think we need to look at the filler, which is on this side, which is why this plate isn't on yet. Right, status report. <laughs> I put this pipe in, uh, so I cut a hole in the back, welded it up there, bent it to come into this pot. That's going to be the return pipe on the other side. Where is it? Over there. Um, so it's welded there, and I've got a fit in that's going to go on there, but I've bought a fit in that is 10 mil uh, outside diameter for the pipe that was coming back, but I think it's too small because the inside is like six mil. So that is a teeny tiny hole, even though a 10 mil pipe fits on the edge. So I might buy a another one of these. It's just a well done fit then, a couple of quid. Um, with a bigger hole, just to make sure that the return isn't restricted. And then find a way to do the flexible pipe outside. That's not too much of a bother. All of this is welded in, all of this is welded in, all of this is welded in. We've got this on the on the top. It has warped ever so slightly, but I can pull that back. That's not a problem. And when we rest it down, I've got a breather on the outside to go into the um, filler pipe, because the filler pipe, oh, it's on the car. I'll go and show you that now. But the filler pipe has one big fill and a little breather that goes all the way up the cap. Inside the fill is a non-return valve. So it, um, so that if it rolls over, the fuel doesn't spill out the cap. I think that's all I'm gonna do as far as non-return and rollover valves go because if it was good enough for Ford, I suppose it's good enough for me. But I need to order the right size pipe for this hole and I'm probably gonna have to move it over a bit because I've gone a bit tight. But either way, we're getting there. Did I show you with the pump in? Here's the pump. Pump goes in there like that. So realistically, any return should always fill this sump up where the pump picks up its fuel and all the fuel in the tank should come to here anyway because it's the lowest point. So with a bit of luck, I shouldn't have any, I shouldn't have the pump running dry at any point. I'm not going to go with foam, I'm going to stick with these baffles because there's no way for me to get foam in there and uh, well there's no way for me to get foam in there or there without putting it in and then welding the front on. And I don't want to do that because I don't know how flammable the foam is. So I'm just going to hope that these baffles are going to be enough, which I think they might be and the fact that I've got like a two-tiered um, a two-tiered fuel tank where 
everything settles at the, this bottom sort of part should be fine and with the return coming into the uh in the little sump we should all be good next i might look at our float oh, oh. to a level now ford in their infinite wisdom decided to uh do what normal car manufacturers do and have a um varied resistor on the swirl pot pump assembly on the Ford Focus. Great. However, they've gone with values that are completely random, like somewhere, somewhere between 15 and 168. So 15 being empty or full and 168 being um, empty or full, whatever the difference is. So basically when, when you've got your um, float at the bottom, the reading through these two wires, these two green wires are, is 15, for example. And then as you put fuel in, the float rises. So the resistance changes on the board and the resistance changes to the cable and the gauge reads it and outputs a different reading. So I searched high and low for a nice, um, a nice fluid reader, fluid level reader. I don't know what they're called that could sit in like a tube like this where it would just go up and down depending on how full the tank was. But for the life of me, I couldn't find one that read these two stupid um, readings. However, Ford weren't that nasty to me and they made this little bit modular. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is sack this off. So what I'm gonna do is mount this in on my little pole here somewhere i'm going to make a little um stand for it Ooh. so we can mount it on the pole somewhere and then uh extend that rod so that the bottom so that the float hits the bottom when it's at the bottom and place it in the right place so that when the float hits the top it hits the top That way we can use the standard gauge or the standard reader through the standard cables, through my fancy little thing on the top into the plug on the Ford Focus. And that should work just like the standards, the standard one. Easy peasy. Well, that was easy. <laughs> nice, simple uh, bracket, drill three holes, tap them for three screws to put the fitting on and I just took the bend out of this um, rod so it now goes further out and now it goes from a full empty or almost full empty that's probably as low as I want it to go anyway <laughs> and it goes all the way full I just need to find a way to keep the float up the top or at the end of the uh, at the end of the rod so that should work now I got my four wires they need to go into the plug that I'm going to put in here eventually and the fit in that I'm going to put in there eventually from there to there and then we've got our return into the pot and then we can put the end on <laughs> and weld it all up. I'm happy with the simplicity. Well I've tacked the, um, the back uh plate on it's only um caught in a couple of places because i'm not welding it up yet there's the um pump assembly uh minus the attachments on the top and the um well and the plug so i'm gonna put that somewhere safe for a minute And I also need to show you that I welded some brackets on the side and I have test fitted in the car. So I know the, um, oh, that's bent. <laughs> uh, so I know it fits in the car and these brackets will hold it. Hopefully I put enough strength in them by putting these sort of bits on the back. 
Uh, they still need to be fully welded up, but uh, I'm gonna do that now. Also, I've put, I don't know if I showed you, but I put the breather on the side and I've also got a new pipe to be the filler. So I'm gonna weld that on now too. Also, if you haven't been able to tell, the postman turned up today. So uh, <laughs> I've got a new fit in for the back for the return. So this is a dash 10, I think, maybe, I don't know. Dash 10. Fit in. That I can feed my 12 mil hose onto, and then this is gonna get welded there. So I'm also gonna do that now. There's the tank. One, two, three, four monks on it. Filler, that goes to the filler neck and the breather next to it. And on the back, there's the return hose. And on the return hose, this should still fit. So I might actually use that to pressurize the tank once I've welded it all up. So yeah, I'll weld it up and um, I'll put the compressor on it, put about seven bar into it. Um, it worked seven bar, <laughs> seven PSI, uh, half a bar. <laughs> that would have gone wrong. Um, yeah, so I'll weld it up. Probably next episode pressure test it and put it in the car and sort the fuel pump and bits out then on the car. So with a bit of luck, it'll be, um, it'll be running from its own fuel tank by next episode. I'm done for tonight. It's, uh, it's a bit humid. Can't be bothered to weld it all up now. <sighs> this hair, unreal. Okay, that's it for this week. This episode's gone on long enough. <laughs> um, next time we'll weld it up and pressure test it, like I just said, and hopefully chuck it back in the car and we're all good. Hopefully this time without any mistakes. Mistakes happen, we live, we learn, uh, we just carry on. But the good news is it's getting there now. So I've not got much more to say. Just have to wait till the next episode. <laughs> Please, if you wouldn't mind, share this video. Um, it, it, it makes quite a bit of difference with the views. Uh, like and subscribe on, on these uh, social media platforms and come back next time to watch me hopefully fit a fuel tank to the car. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Ciao.